Do not attempt to adjust your programming. You are now listening to B Movies and Beyond. Pew pew. Pew 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 pew. Right, you just gotta add in those extra pews because there's just not enough. We just got a pew pew button. Pew 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 pew. Where the button? Our mouths are the button. That's right. Oh man, welcome in, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Episode 352 of B-Movies and Beyond. Ryan. Peter. Three weeks in a row, man. New record. You know, we almost... I almost dropped the ball on it. I almost dropped the ball. All right, well, we made it work. But now we got to have a quickie, though, because I might fall asleep. We'll you know what's what funny? I had, I had a friend one time, and uh, we were just casually hanging out. And, you know, I don't know where she's like, you know, sometimes... A quickie's just good enough. It is good and enough. I was, I was like, wow. It's the first time She's I've ever right. heard a woman say that. She's 100% right, though. You know? Yeah. You want sometimes. a little something, but you don't have a lot of time. He's, but you just got to squeeze it in. You just got to pound ah, it out. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a good episode for everyone. Uh, we got a new trailer for, well, I guess the first trailer. The trailer for Terrifier 3. Plus teaser trailer some, teaser trailer yeah which that's man i gotta say i i feel like that is all that we need now it is ridiculous the amount of these trailers and like these other couple of trailers we have are like are all trailer number twos or the official ones so they're much longer and in my personal opinion maybe giving them way too much um that's kind of so, our quick question um coming up and yes uh yes i yes yes we just need a teaser trailer and just teaser trailers nothing else i agree but what else have we got on deck peter a spawn update apparently (laughs) (laughs) so spawn movie update can't wait for that and then we we said we're gonna do it last week and we came through i mean it was it was rough but we did it. We watched Green Lantern in honor I love of Ryan Reynolds. Me. How do I watch this fucking shit? <laughs> I, I was not. I almost I was going to say, how do I watch this fucking Green Lantern bullshit? And then I took out the fucking because I was like, that's just too much. I'll just say it's Green Lantern bullshit. You know, you know, um, I'm right there with you, bro. I just. You can cuss it out to me. It's okay. I get it. But uh, um, it's gonna be I, interesting one to talk about. That's for we, sure. We want to put the thrumble in your ball sack. That's right. Uh, but this is like one I, you know, it's kind of. I don't know if this is much of a tease, man. Like, oh man, stick around and listen to Green Lantern. But you should, you should stick around and listen to it. There's a lot of surprise actors in that movie. I didn't even freaking realize. They're trying hard. That's for sure. And we'll get we'll get into it. But as always, let's start off with our uh, quick question. Quickie? The quickie. <laughs> what? How? Why? I have so many questions. Yeah. Um, um, All right, Ryan, what's our quick question? I literally just came up with this. And it goes along with how you describe the trailers. What movie trailers, what movie did you avoid the trailers to avoid any potential spoilers? Well, okay. Deadpool and Wolverine. Okay. Again, I think this, this episode might be just in honor of, of, of this, of Brian Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. Well, let's, uh, let's preview it that way so people do stay tuned. This is an episode for Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, like I tried very hard to avoid um, a lot of stuff about Deadpool and Wolverine. Like mm-hmm. they have released so much content over the past couple of weeks in, in like preparation for its release. By the time this comes out, it'd be released. Um, hopefully we have seen it by then, uh, but it will be out. 
and but there's been so much like so many little cameos and now the fact that we're a day away from like thursday night for those showings people are already getting some like advanced screenings or showings of it and i've been seeing all kinds of just shit just popping up in youtube and and all kinds of things but even their own marketing team i feel has shown too much of this movie which i just want to be surprised uh so right there that's probably my first one because it's top of mind um do you have other ones ryan ones that like you can think in recent memory were like wow that trailer like, ruined this movie for me like after ruined the movie oh yeah like you see the trailer right you're like oh i'm so excited and then you go see the movie you're like wow the trailer was better <laughs> or the trailer you know put out something that you know ruined the film for you right spoiled some some teas or something like that you know like i think that's what's happening with deadpool and, and wolverine right now is that they are just they're putting out too many cameos and stuff where i just want to be surprised i don't want to know about them i don't want to know who they are usually i i I thrive on this kind of stuff where like but i don't want to know that it's only two hours long i don't want to know you know this trailer has this spoiler this character i don't want to know how long wolverine wears whatever you know i I don't want to know that with this movie because i feel like two hours is too short for this movie i think this movie should almost be a three-hour movie um Mm. but some of the reviews and look peter i've avoided a lot since the last trailer um and uh because that last trailer made me i was like that would have been nice to know in the movie that would have been nice to see in the movie versus like guess what so and so surprise but allegedly there's a lot of cameos and a lot of fun easter eggs and stuff throughout the movie where like this one wasn't a big one um that would detri- like be detrimental to the story okay fair enough um but don't give it to me anyway you know you know what that tells me is like a certain scene we saw in the previous one the tv spot um is not going to be a big deal which i think in the movie kind of should be a big deal you know exactly and- and um, uh, to answer your question in most recent memory, you're going to hate it of me saying this, but for me, it was Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I think those trailers gave away too much. And I think they did them in a way where they jumbled up like the events of the movie itself. But like when I saw the movie, I was like, well, that was in the trailer. Well, that was in the trailer. Well, that was in the trailer. Cool. You know, and like that's another one where it's a very cameo based movie where you're kind of like, I would have loved to see that in the theater. So, you know, I'm 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 with you on that. I I don't know if it really spoiled anything, but it definitely like I was totally prepared and had a very good idea of of what was going on. Like, yes, there is some extra stuff that I had no idea about, which was nice when I finally saw the whole thing. But I don't it's it's we talked about this last week, man, with long legs, man. Sometimes less is more. Yep. Long legs did it perfectly by teasing out the unknown. And I think that's what they should do with all these trailers, but they don't. Uh, my, my favorite thing, favorite thing about long legs was um, they, they kept a very important character hidden. And even it, when, so if you go on YouTube now, like there's a certain scene where they're like how they film that scene. And even when they were supposed to show that character, they blocked, they put a big block in front of them. So it was kind of funny. I was like, oh, they, they're still not showing it. And I love how they were marketing it because the question was asked on social media today too, on one of my socials is like, this is what you guys have been like losing sleep over. And they showed a photo and I'm like, you guys don't get it. Like the marketing did its job. People are talking about this and how creepy it was. And you go into a movie like that and you want your heart pulsing. You want that. And you know, that kind of goes along with um, uh, this upcoming trailer. We're going to talk about dude. I get, I get heart palpitations when I think about that moment in that movie theater, the first time we saw terrifier and it was so compact and we were there. Like I was like legit, like thinking art, the clown was going to come out and like, 
scare the shit out of us. And then when I went to go see the second one, dude, I had those same like feelings. Like, dude, I'm like, dude, this is gonna be gory. This is gonna be nasty. This is gonna be like scary. And dude, the best thing about seeing Terrifier was the fact that we had no idea and saw no trailers yes. at all for this. That was just taking a stab in the dark, and it turned out to be amazing. And I and I, I'll say this about like talking about Terrifier too, and this is probably a good segue to our trailers right after we talk about Terrifier too. But like, I, I personally felt like those trailers didn't. It, it was just enough, right? It, the trailers for Terrifier two were just enough, and I think probably a tease is the perfect thing, right? I got. Mm -hmm. The idea art's back and he's gonna be bloody he's gonna do some crazy shit and and that's all you needed right that's all you need you didn't know you need to know why he's back you don't need to know you know like you saw like okay here's the people that he's kind of chasing after and like it's halloween time but that's it so that's all i needed right i don't really and maybe this is just because it's not much of a plot per se but right it's creepy shit you know art's there he's gonna do some you know uh gory shit and then there's this girl that he's chasing and it's halloween time like those are the three things that you really need to know and that's all they teased and that's all they showed and then you they let the movie speak for itself uh well the good so. thing for this episode too is going through news um Everything this week and last week has been about Deadpool and Wolverine. And I don't know about you. I, I see that you're on the same page with me. I chose not to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I know. Listen, we have one more sleep until uh, we get to watch a movie tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to I'm I'm there. Purchase tickets a month in advance. I'm Are you the, you're seeing it tomorrow night, Thursday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. OK, and so. Here, let me um, ask you this. The, the, another quick question before we move on to trailers is the fact that <laughs> does does all this hype set your expectations too high? And I think I've asked this before. And I, I know I this has happened to me where like the Hulk, the original Hulk, man, I was so excited to see that. And I waited... And it was garbage. Actually, I think I probably did it to Green Lantern as well. I think I was so excited to see Green Lantern that <laughs> like my expectations were so high. And you see it and you're like, whoa. Uh, so is there a potential that your expectations are so high for this film that they just cannot be met and, and uh, you might dislike it? No, not no, this one. Okay. Not this All one right. because, um, because we're getting the team up of the ages, one that we've been asking for. Because where my expectations are, I'm expecting to have a good time. Um, I went back and watched Deadpool two and watched the ending, and I love when he was going traveling back in time and whatnot. So I'm curious to see how they incorporate that. But I love his conversation with, uh, Deadpool from x-men origins and wolverine and he goes and when they ask you you say yes you yeah. come back you know like how he was like setting it up yeah um i'm glad that that happened like and i say no because this movie itself is just a fan service to to fans so like if it's shitty they can they can wipe it away absolutely if um if it's great they could build upon it so um, you know, it's not like Green Lantern where if you watch the promo stuff on YouTube for Green Lantern, like they were hyping this up to be the next best movie. Like this was like Ryan Reynolds breakout movie. This is like Blake Lively's breakout movie. Like they were hyping up how the suit was CGI. And I was like, oh, how little did you guys, how naive that you guys were that you just made a big steaming pile of review later. Um, <laughs> uh, so my expectations are mine and mine alone. Um, I don't think they're any higher or lower because of marketing, but I could see that marketing really hyped up so much more. And do they, the thing with a movie like this 
is they got to sell merch. This is a movie to uh, promote gin, Xbox controllers, action figures, uh, stuff like that. So they got to sell the merch. Um, but that I they do, but oh man, I'm just a little. I, I guess that's probably why I'm worried, man. There's so much invested in this. Uh, but rumor has it this weekend alone is on pace to be the highest grossing rated R movie of all time. I believe it, man. I'm I'm excited. I'm trying to find a babysitter so the, the wife and I can go see it. So I get it. Good. Good. Yeah. It's it's going to be great. Like, I, I just ugh, I don't know if we should even talk more about it. Like, I think we should just kind of let it take its course. And, All right. Let's move on. And, the next week we'll talk about it. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, where are we at? Oh, let's let's move right along because we got to get to the, the meat, which is Green Lantern. <laughs> Here are some exciting coming attractions from movies and beyond. Yeah. I like so I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me just say this. You put down the rubble moon, the director's cut. I'm not talking about that bullshit. We're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't want to talk about that. Zack Snyder must have something in his contract where he gets to make his own director's cut again. Every movie. So I haven't watched the second one. It's just ridiculous. This is just, you know, they're trying to capitalize again on like, oh, look at how well Zack Snyder's, you know, Justice League did. Right. Like they're trying to do that. Let's let him do the move that he wanted to do. If you really thought it was going to be that good, you should have let him do it that way from the beginning. And by the way, Netflix kind of did by saying, hey, why don't you just break it into two movies so then you can have fucking four hours to tell your story. Not good enough? All right, let's do a director's cut. Did not watch this trailer. I don't care what's new. Just the guy got to do basically what he wanted to do. And now they're just going to do some new scenes and everything and put it out there again. And hopefully, again, maybe get some new subscribers, you know, or get some people that are still invested in it. But it's ridiculous. I think this is one of the dumbest things I've seen from Netflix. You know what sucks is and you could tell this movie flopped. I was at uh, the store today and I was just perusing through the electronics and they hyped up merchandise for Rebel Moon. They had like spicy popcorn. They had all kinds of random shit for this movie. I was like, who was stoked about this movie coming to Netflix that they would buy random shit for it? Um, I did watch the trailer and I was confused because midway through, I was like, director's cut. I was like, wait, is the second one not out yet? Is this the second one? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> this The second one has been released. I totally missed them both. And again, right what you said. I'm not in this. Like, sorry, you didn't captivate me uh, in in any of your worlds, uh, Zack Snyder. So, so we don't have to talk about it. This is fucking yeah. stupid, is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> speaking of, yeah, okay, we we're talking Telling about too much. Trailers. Yeah, which one do you think told? Oh, probably this Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah and this is trailer two by the way and i think this is where it really does like you actually get to see the framework in this trailer and i'll be honest i'm you know it sucks like i used to be a fan i, I watched all the trailers right i think you and i both did that evan was not a fan <laughs> mm -hmm. um and this is I, i'm starting to come around because like this this trailer it, I I feel like it showed too much. Like it was again stuff that like oh man that would have been nice to like just see unfold on the big screen. Uh, I will say for the trailer that you know I think there's still a lot that remains, but just knowing that there's a team up between Beetlejuice and uh, uh, Nomona, no, 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 why can't I say her name? Um, Lydia. Yeah, Lydia their care you know them together like mm -hmm. uh you know that was a little bit too much in my opinion i was like dang it i didn't need to know that like i know the whole 
like this tells you the whole premise. The first official trailer, I was I just knew these people were in there. I saw images were like, oh man, that looks pretty cool, but I did not know the exact plot. This one I know the exact plot in it, and I feel like I was better off not knowing the exact plot. Plot. Yep. Um yeah, I mean, I'm still gonna see it, but I'm gonna well, be disappointed knowing that. I know too much. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the two left that I feel like did it actually good job. We got Joker, the Foley uh, Ducks, 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 Foy Fo Lado, Foy Lado, which uh, is why uh, I did I not look this up one day? I did, didn't I? I think you did. It just means the like, second film or something. Film two. Is that no. what it means? It means madness of two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Close enough. I said two. Uh, madness <laughs> of two. You got Which, duh, right. I mean, it's just so fancy. Like, part of me actually just, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too against uh, foreign languages, but why didn't you just call it madness of two? <laughs> it it would be, um, it would be special if you did it that way. I mean, so, in my mind, this this movie is Joker two, mm -hmm. and that's how I'm not, I, gonna, I'm not gonna run around and be like, oh yeah, did you guys go watch Joker Foil Ado? No, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah. did you see Joker and Harley? <laughs> cool. Did you see Joker two? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, he, here's, you know what? I I'm on the fence on it. This movie showed too much because of the fact that like it is very confusing. Um, that's why I like it. Yeah, and I like that too. But part of it, though, is the fact that I don't know what's reality and what's not. And I know that's the gist of it. But you know, in the 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 Joker, right? It was very just linear, right? There, you didn't really get the sense of like, oh shit, like some of this might not have been real. And towards the end of the film, this one is just really going all in on that whole what is real and what is not. And uh, like I almost, I don't know. I guess this one's going to be tough. I think we won't know if they showed too much until we've seen this movie, but there is a lot going on in that trailer. They showed a lot of imagery. Again, I don't, I think a lot of, not in order, but potentially too much. It's it's like a puzzle you gotta like solve, right? You gotta un, un undo the puzzle, right? You gotta put the pieces all together. They're all jumbled up. Um, so I don't know. I think that one remains to be seen right now, Ryan. Fair enough. Um, can we just kind of blend news with trailers? Because I just realized two pieces of our news is about the trailers yeah um, blend it do you gotta do this thing yeah we'll do it real quick <laughs> see yeah i don't know how to, do i are we talking about news right now um yes because I mean the, the way they introduced this trailer youtube was brilliant in concept but executed like shit like it was just the day before and they just had a, a set with a bunch of random sounds a full day before like were you gonna sit around and wait for something to happen for 24 what hours are about. what are oh. you talking about oh what am i talking about okay in notes let me see if it's oh it's not even available anymore so for 24 hours they did a live stream and it was just like a photo of or it was like a video of the joker and harley set that's in the trailer and you heard like random like laughing and you heard random things and it was leading up to a, a, a countdown to the trailer but was there supposed to be special things is is that giving away too much do we need a preview to a trailer why is this trailer man is getting so stupid um it, i because it's all about views right now ryan it's all about views yeah and the way that you build views is by you gotta 
you gotta tease it first and you know personally i kind of like that i get a little notification beforehand saying like you know you get the little teaser to the teaser trailer <laughs> we're like boom trailer tomorrow you know it's gonna drop and they go a couple images right and but now i'm like oh sweet i know this is gonna come out tomorrow i got something to look forward to and and it's only one day away right now okay. this whole like live stream thing I, i'm do you know there's probably people that just listen the whole time right like they probably watched the whole thing, did it, were sat on that whole live stream. I'm kind of curious. I would love to know the numbers on that. Uh, but it makes you wonder, like, you know, was there little teasers in there that we just didn't know? You know, I'm sure there's going to be an article. Maybe it didn't work. Maybe that was a dumb idea and they'll never do it again. I know I didn't even hear about it. I wasn't aware. I didn't watch or listen and. And to be honest, I wouldn't have because that's too long to wait for a trailer. <laughs> yeah, who has a full day to just sit on a live, live stream? Mm -hmm. So right here, oh. Yahoo Movies, the second trailer arriving three months after the debut be, be, be trailer was <laughs> de, yeah. debut, debut was teased with the 24-hour live stream started Monday, July 22nd, featuring an empty TV studio promising a show by Joker and Harley. And that's it. And then it talks about the trailer or it talks about the movie. Wait, so the live stream promised to show something with Joker and Harley? Well, no, it was a live stream of the set of uh, Joker and Harley. But, dude, I'm not seeing anything so... that was like special about it. That's interesting. I, 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 if this they is the actually did article. something with it, if they actually did something with it, I like that. Like the idea to potentially glimpse something. But if they literally just had a camera on there and nothing happened and then they just played the trailer and that was it, like I'd probably be pretty pissed off and actually maybe dislike the trailer, you know? <laughs> like, I'm... fuck you for making me watch 24 hours of nothing. At least, like, you could have had a cameraman at least, like, you know, take a camera around to like different set pieces, you know, get a little behind the scenes stuff like that would have been cool. I would have watched that. I don't know. Yeah. So I guess we'll, it sounds like at least to us that it did not pay off. It really didn't because I actually sent this to you guys in the group chat and nobody responded to it. So that yeah, tells you don't have time to watch 24 hours of a stupid live stream. You can't just put it on in the background. The answer is no, because no, I can't either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, we're back to trailers. Um, back to trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Peter's like, God, how am I gonna? Edit I knew this? you were gonna do it. I was waiting. No, I love it because I switched the, the, the title thing on YouTube. So, uh, uh Terrifier 3, got a teaser trailer, which I hope that's all we get. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Be Next news. <laughs> Before the teaser trailer, they uh, on Instagram, Damien, Damien Leone uh, sh showcased three images from there to tease the teaser trailer. Which this is what I'm kind of talking about. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah. those images, but again, it was a tease that, hey, pay attention, like, tomorrow it's coming, you know? Right. And I just happened, like, I probably look at Instagram more than anything else nowadays, uh, and that just happened to pop up, and I was like, holy shit! So, pretty excited about that. Um, but the actual teaser itself, again, art's back. It's going to be gory. You see yes. him doing a uh it's setting Christmas time and and the chick's back again. I forget her name. Both chicks so, are back. Yeah, so it's a continuation, and again, that's all you need to know. And it just it had some a little bit of disturbing imagery imagery, you know. You saw oh yeah, the face <laughs> excuse me, the chick that got her like face like ripped off. You see her image. Um so I got Let's names see. to these chicks that you're talking about. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
Sienna Shaw, so which is Lauren Lavera, she mm -hmm. was in Terrifier 2. She's the new scream queen. You see her back and she's walking through um, you know, dark scenes. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And then and so what it seems like in this trailer, and if you look at the theatrical poster, which I'm very, very um Do you have it? Can surprised. You post, put it on? Yeah, let me pull it up. It's on Wikipedia. But um, let's see. So you go to Wikipedia and <laughs> And uh, you go to share screen, and then oh no, Chrome wants to have access. Oh, do. come on, it's yeah. tiny, but oh, I can't blow that up. That's fine, I'll, I'll do some work. I'll do some work. So, Terra Fire 3 poster. <clears throat> Here we go, images. N dang, dude, I'm failing right now. Whole bunch of shit. Um. Oh wait! Okay. Here it is. So what's so excited about this poster, Ryan? Oh, it's not that one either. Uh, what's exciting about it is the other girls in it, dude. The um, the one from the first movie, Vicky Hayes, she's in it, and her face is mangled in that, dude. Like, that's a movie poster. Oh, that's on the movie. Yeah. Which? Oh, dude. If, if they, if you could see it popping up over here. I, I do I see it now how like he's Santa and, and Holden her and I don't do this <laughs> talk about a poster man <laughs> that's uh, wow um I it, dude if they do more with her compared to like the you know at least the last movie I think I love that idea um but again you see this with this trailer it's all you need to know and and you see a, a foot you see art sit in some uh pool of blood and do a little snow angel which and then him leaving and it turns out to angel like it's just it's awesome it's it's everything that you need uh to know and and i also just love that hey christmas is coming early october 11th boom like you like honestly i hope all he does from this is just maybe put out some more images you know on his instagram and stuff like that like, i i i hope there's not another trailer like to be honest and and honestly if there is and i've been kind of doing this more and more on on our show is that i don't want to talk about the second episode especially when they get to the third episodes or third trailers man it's just it's right. too much so I usually do a teaser in the official one and that's it. And even though some of those official ones, I'm like, no, nope, not talking about it. So, so maybe that's, we'll make that a rule between you and I, uh, unspoken rule written in stone. Now, like a president, right. a presidential seal, this is happening and nobody changed their mind about it whatsoever. This was our decision and our decision alone. We will, Talk about a teaser and we'll talk about one trailer and that's it. I like it I like because it. we don't need two, three. So no more Beetlejuice, no more Deadpool, no more Terrifier, no more anything else. So I like it. Nice. Um, and what's the last piece of news, Ryan? Well, I want to talk about the trailer too. I thought it was really cool. I like the blood angels and I oh. he, like they showed him just, plane in it and then just disappeared and that you just saw his his outline um and it, i'm really glad that vicky hayes is back in this because she wasn't really in the second one too much so um a little callback and if we're looking at the cast list so we got sienna shaw Vic, vicky hayes we have art the clown we have chris jericho we do have a santa claus and then we have tom savini so tom savini is going to be was he in the second one I do not know. Oh, dude, and Clint Howard is going to be in here too. Nice. Mm, so, um, yep. I, I'm, I'm ready for it. It's in my blood right now. And um, <laughs> this is bit, this is an ongoing joke for us at B Movies and Beyond. But uh, Spawn creator Todd McFarlane. And Bloomhouse T's new movie is King Spawn. 
<laughs> okay. So Todd McFarlane did a mm-hmm. little tease on, on Instagram with make this a summer to um oh there it is. Oh, with some ads. Ads come Not on. A sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> um but he, here's the thing though with this is that I thought Todd McFarlane was writing all of this, right? And this clearly says King Spawn by Matt Mixon, Malcolm Spellman, and Scott Silver, based off on the characters created by Todd McFarlane. I did not see Todd McFarlane as a writer on here. So what has happened? Have they totally scrapped the Todd McFarlane script? And this is a new script. What is happening here? That's the reason this... That's like the number one reason this movie has taken so long is because Todd McFarlane wanted to like write and direct this entire thing. Yeah, and so does that mean that he gave up? He's like, I'm not a good writer, guys. <laughs> Dude, he's so. kind of not though. Like, yeah, did he ever write? Did he write for Spawn or did he just did the illustrations? Right? He created. He, he created Spawn. Um, but like, really write for it though. Dude, yes. I see. mm. (laughs) Yes, he did. Let's see. Let's see. I don't don't know if I could pull this up really quick. I think Jeremy Renner is going to be in here. (laughs) And Spawn? Allegedly. Allegedly, we have uh, Jamie Foxx and Jeremy Renner. Nice. Um, Anyway, I... To answer your question, I know he created Spawn and like he created the world, but I don't think he wrote for it. And th- that's the big thing right now is King Spawn wasn't written by McFarlane. I'm okay. pretty sure it wasn't, but this is a different. This is like Spawn. I don't know the story of King Spawn. Okay, the story in which Spawn is pressured to take the throne of hell after one of the most dangerous beings in history escapes from the underworld is one of a number of Spawn spinoff titles launched in the wake of McFarland's history making 300th issue of Spawn in 2019. I don't know. Um, I, I feel like that Bloomhouse is like basically telling McFarland, hey dude, you gotta like give him something, otherwise it's just gonna go away. I- yeah, I mean, this is he's just teasing us, but I'm tired of the teasing, Todd. Come on, get with it and actually make this. So they still say it's on for 2025, so that means they need to start like producing this now. Oh, yeah, I agree, but I, I don't believe it. So I don't think we'll see this until 2027. Now I'm soured, my mood has soured, Ryan. <clears throat> Just in time to move on to Green Lantern. Perfect. That way we can give it a fair and honest review. That's right. It's time. (laughs) Review! (laughs) So... Fans of us, listeners, viewers, everybody, we we fulfill our promises and we we stuck through it. And uh, um, you did your homework yesterday, and as well as I did, and, and today, uh, and I, today, I finished it today, like an hour or so before we recorded. <laughs> My gosh, dude, <laughs> dude, it was hard. And <laughs> here's the thing: I I mean, I think everyone's seen Green Lantern. Nobody's seen this movie. This movie sucks. Okay. Part of the thing is, <laughs> I was kind of wanted to be like, can we find the bright spots of this movie? And I don't know if I can, though, <laughs> Ryan. But maybe it's just more fun. Let's just talk about all the, the shittiness of it. But I think everyone, Green Lantern, this is DC prop- property. This is... uh. 2011 when this came out so this is like after the flop again you know what Ryan and I don't know if you want to do this but 
I've never actually watched Jonah Hex. That was the movie that came out right before Green Lantern the year before. Gosh. Have you I've seen, never that? seen it either? No. Okay. Because I, I thought it looked terrible. It, yes. I kind of want to watch it. But so, but maybe we can break that up. We can say that for another time. Uh, this is, yeah, Green Lantern comes out 2011. And I mean, the, I, I think kind of put some context on this, right? Like, you have DC is probably at its height, right? Because 20 or 2008, the dark Knight comes out. So we're in the middle of the Batman, uh, Christopher Nolan trilogy trilogy here. And dark Knight was amazing, right? I mean, some people think it's amazing. I, I thought there was issues. <laughs> um, bat pod. mainly vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and also just, yeah, most of the bad pod. Uh, Marvel 2020 or 2008, 2008. Sorry. It's so weird doing the, the 20s now. Like it used to be 2000s back then. Now it's 2024, you know? Uh, 2008, though, Iron Man comes out and sets the MCU, uh, you know, just rocketing forward. Little Mishap, The Incredible Hulk came out 2008. Uh, 2010, Iron Man 2, 2, 2011. Is that when they start doing 20, 20s? Is 2011? Uh, Thor <laughs> comes out, and that was the same year that we got Green Lantern, right? So, you know, they're, I think at this point, DC and Marvel, are like, all right, we kind of, you know, let's keep on going this route. And it's not until like I think after Green Lantern, they're like, oh shit, we fucked up, right? Because 2023, after the Dark Knight Rises finishes in 2022, or damn it, 2012, <laughs> Man of Still comes out in 2013, creating the Snyderverse, right? Because Marvel has just uh nailed it with the Avengers that came out in 2012 right C crushed it so green lantern's really the changing of the guard here this is what set everything in motion to be like oh man our movies for dc are really sucking and and uh and mcu is just so connected uh that they had to go with the whole snyderverse right so I think that sets the stage of this, right? Green Lantern is the reason why this all kind of changed slash MCU. Um, but here's the thing. With Green Lantern, you saw all these pieces, though, right? Like, y y yes. Like, they were creating a very large universe. And, and this is part of the reason why I think this movie kind of flopped is because it is too big and this is i mean we're talking about galactic size right the green lantern core is they kept on saying the number of all these green lanterns which was like that is why why do they keep on repeating this i don't care but there's like three thousand ish green lanterns that cover the universe like six thousand whatever sectors they have to they're like the the galactic police enforcement right is that how you would describe it uh guardians of the universe sure or green lantern corps yeah or the galactic police enforcement bureau or, or the intergalactic police force yeah, yeah. bureau <laughs> bureau so universe. yeah 2020 24 2012 20 2004 thousand 24 2024 uh you, just, you basically like outlined everything i complained about in the mid 90s of their future movies yeah sometime in like 22050 or 2500 of 2080 it gets complicated gets complicated with those numbers. how far in the future i don't know throw out some numbers yeah <laughs> 2004 um, no too close 2000 two, 2040 45 45 8 Mm -hmm. yeah. now we're talking like joe biden and he was alive <laughs> anyway so yeah 
<laughs> the Green Lanterns, they protect the universe basically with their magical rings and the power of will. Right? Dude, can I just tell you something? Go ahead. I, I want you to continue explaining this movie, but what a stupid character to like start a um, universe with. Like, I always thought Green Lantern was the dumbest character. Like, he was literally like a group of 10 year olds who are like, yeah, I got this ring pop and I have this power. And then you have that color. So you get that power. And then we become like the Power Rangers, but we're not Power Rangers. Like, that's exactly what. And then you got to be the fish alien guy. And then you could be the guy with the big brain. And then I have unlimited power because I chose it first. Like, that's what Green Lantern is to me. And that's kind of what this movie was. Uh, it, yes, it's a mess. It is a mess. Um, yeah, I, I did. Did you read the comic books at all? I don't know if you just listen to what I said. I think Green Lantern was <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, but where did that come from? Did you try reading the comic books and like, man, that's dumb? Or did you... Um, I, I found out there was a superhero who could imagine things through a magical ring and fly around, and he was part of a magical friend group. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Intergalactic uh, Police Bureau. <laughs> um, no, not even that. The <laughs> Justice League. like The Justice League had the woman, it had Superman, and it had the dude. And then it had the fish guy, and then it had the magical guy who like, no, uh I have all those powers. Yeah. Um, that's what Green Lantern is to me. No, uh, no. So, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I've never been like the biggest like DC guy, minus like Batman. Batman. Yeah, I read those comic books, but you know, there's so many. Is it's kind of hard to do, but um, well, Batman's a cool character. Yeah, but I I gotta say, like in the comic or in the the animated series and. And even movies, like okay, animated movies. I should, let me clarify. I like Green Lantern. I actually like. Have you seen any of the animated Green Lantern movies, Peter? I don't know if you cut on to that <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I just okay. So <laughs> it goes so far that you will not watch anything as Green Lantern. So you must just. This was your idea, Ryan. I'm just going to throw that out there. I was you were watching in the background, so just podcasting with me and like and I was like, fine, I guess we're gonna we're gonna watch Green Lantern. My 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 thought behind this is because Wolverine and Deadpool is coming out tomorrow, um I wanted to see basically this was Ryan Reynolds like his first big comic movie. Right, because Deadpool or the Wolverine one. No, I'm sorry, Blade was his first one. This is his main character thing, right? Yeah, but and I, and I was I was mostly curious on why this movie was so bad, and it just like validated all my thoughts about just Green Lantern as a character himself, not Ryan Reynolds, but Green Lantern as a character himself. And I was like, how can they how can they carry a movie with this? Like, anyway, okay. And yes, it was my idea, but I've tried to give Green Lantern a chance. Um, he is comic relief. Like Hal Jordan is that dude who's like standing behind Wonder Woman and says something witty. And then everybody looks at him and they're like, oh, Hal. Oh, Hal. And then he like rides away on his magic ring carpet. Anyway. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> I, I think you're kind of. I don't know if you're. <laughs> You gotta think you're really against Green Lantern, so no, I'm really against like DC stupid characters Holy like Aquaman. Shit. Did you no? So he was in X-Men Origin and came out in 2009 and did Green Lantern 2011. So um, it, he I mean he kind of I mean you're right, his probably big break was in Blade Trinity or, or for at least superhero stuff. Right. And then he did Wolverine or Origins. And then from there, that didn't work out too well. He jumped to Green Lantern. Like, I just like I, I see a pattern, right? He likes comic books. I think he likes this stuff because. Oh, guess another one that was kind of like a flop. 
that's a comic book property. Smoke and Aces? No. Uh, I don't think so, but the RIPD, the Rest in Peace uh, Department or Bureau or whatever. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, right. So he's done this like like he has like he has a soft spot I think for these types of movies. Um I think Deadpool's been his you know ultimate goal. Um but okay. So I think that just kind of goes to show like, I don't, this was not Ryan Reynolds fault. Why this movie is a flop. I, that's what we're saying with this one. The, yeah. Yeah. This whole thing is like, and I put this, I think basically just on the, the writers of this, this movie had, it's too big for what it wanted to do. And again, I, I saw how the, the, they were kind of setting this thing up to be something much bigger. Obviously it has a teaser at the end. We're going to spoil the shit out of this movie, by the way, there's a teaser at the end setting up for another movie trying to do what, uh, you know, Iron Man did. So uh, again, it was setting all these pieces. And yet I think it, it's just, it's just too much. It was too much. And, and so you couldn't really focus on one thing. Like you talk about Ryan Reynolds, right? Like, I think he was a great Hal Jordan, to be honest. Uh, just speaking about the character development of that, though, like they start going down one path. They kind of show like, oh, he has this history where his dad dies, which like it's just I don't that was kind of so dumb, in my opinion. But apparently he has some fear. But for the most part, you don't see him with any fear. And then he just kind of had like, no, you have some fear. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I do. Have oh, fear. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I like, guess it's just like you're going one direction with him. We're like, oh, this guy's fearless. Yet. Oh, he froze up on this thing. Like, it, it just it is it too true, true to horn in. Right. And I think there's other elements where that happens. And then. So he gets this ring, right? And he gets sucked off into space and goes to Green Lantern Planet. And, you know, like none of this stuff really phases him that much, right? Would you not agree? <clears throat> yeah. It's almost like he started off as like this maverick type of character, was totally fearless and was like, yeah, I got this, whatever. And everybody's like, no, you can't do that. And he's like, no, yeah, no, I can. Like, he was supposed to be funny about it, which is why Ryan Reynolds was probably cast in this. Um, and how do I say this? Like, I I just, I don't think the character of Hal Jordan was, like, developed well. Like, I think Ryan Reynolds did well portraying him, but I think, again, Hal Jordan has an identity crisis. Everything you, you describe for him is him in the comic books is him in a portrayal that's why like the green lantern they've never stayed with one dude like some... I, I i think that's one of the cool things with the green lanterns is that it keeps on finding a new character a new character it is a new character but a new person right to don the thing and i, and I kind of like that because you can change them out uh but it works for movies like this. Like, so if they wanted to reboot it, they can. Who's the other Green Lantern? His name's like, oh, there's so many. I know there yeah. really is so many in and, and, and the comic books, too, man. And it's one of those things where, like, it's kind of interesting. Like, he, like, how Jordan's probably one of the most famous ones, but there's a lot of other ones where, like, talk about, like, you know, usually you kill off someone and then they bring them back like this one. No, they kill them off and then they just get a new green lantern. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, but the, the point with all this is that the fact that like they start going down one road with this character, like he's kind of fearless, but uh, he gets a little bit of fear. And then his whole demeanor like changes once he like, gets off the planet. Right. And goes back to earth. He's just kind of, he's a bummer. Yeah. He's just like, and like, there's kind of some moments where like they try to be funny with it, but it was so just shoved in there and didn't fit because the rest of the time he's just, he's bummed out because like I failed. I, I suck at being a green lantern, you know, like, like that quick, I don't even know how long that took, but like it was so short, his time in space and just, and just all this stupid stuff. Like and it wasn't, 
dude, they should have done a training montage. I came in, it wasn't even a training montage. Like they're like, all right, we're going to do some training. So you learn how to use your, your ring and all this shit. Right. And it was just so like, where was the fucking montage? <laughs> this movie, you know what? I'm going to say it, Ryan. If this movie had a fucking montage, it probably would have gotten a whole percent better. So what would save this movie is it actually followed through with the scenes that it was supposed to lay out. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Like, I, you know like, what? I think that was supposed to be a montage, but they didn't really like they didn't know what to do. By the way, <laughs> did, we, did we mention uh, the director is Martin Campbell and we haven't, but that's very important because um, before we get into it, this is like DC's way of like, okay, this is what Marvel did. We need to do exactly that. Big name director, build up this universe, blah, 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 and shove a bunch of stuff all into one movie right away uh, because that's what they thought Marvel was doing, but Marvel wasn't doing that. Anyway, director, who was this, Peter? Martin Campbell. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the director of, um, I mean, most of these movies I feel like are not very good, but there is. You shut your mouth. <laughs> okay, hang on. The Mask of Zorro. I enjoyed. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, okay. You, you terrible. I enjoyed. Vertical limit. Uh, let me say, okay. Mass of Zorro, like out of this list, I think is the best one. Vertical limit is not good, but entertaining because <laughs> I watched it not too long ago. Then there's this like TV series. I don't really want to talk about. There's beyond borders, which I don't even know what that is. Then they did the Legend of Zorro, which killed the franchise. It sucked. Mm -hmm. And then he did one of the James Bonds movies with Daniel. Uh, I was going to call it Daniel Radcliffe, but uh, what's the other Daniel? Daniel Craig. Right? Peter. Casino Royale. The worst he did, one. He did. He did one. Of, okay. Quantum of Solace was the worst one. Oh, Casino, Casino Royale was fun. One. Uh, he I also did not did like Golden it. Eye, dude. He didn't. He was a director of Golden Eye. I'm looking at his list. He's not on Golden Eye. Oh wait, hang on. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I didn't. I thought he started at Mask of Zorro. Okay, Golden Eye. <laughs> Damn so, it, he got me there. I love yeah. Golden Eye. The Foreigner was okay with Jackie Chan. I never saw oh. the protege. Edge of Darkness. That. I never saw that either. Who was that? Martin Campbell. Mel Gibson. Ooh, Mel Gibson movie. We were talking about him trying to make his comeback. Yeah, but clearly, I don't know. He he has a couple hits, but for the most part, for this guy, I think they're 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 kind of flops, man. Well, they're kind of flops. Let's talk about what Warner Brothers did wrong. They cast a director who is like a spy thriller director. This movie has no spy or thrilling aspect to it whatsoever. They basically asked someone to go completely out of his element and make a completely CGI movie. So this is what ruined everything for me with it was this was immediately, immediately the CGI was terrible. Immediately. It didn't matter yeah, but what character. But is that his fault, though? Yes. I, mean, I, know he's, I know he's directing it. Because and, and GoldenEye, Mask of Zorro, Casino Royale, Vertical Limit, those all thrived on fast-paced action scenes, running across rooftops, sliding down things. Like Most of the time, they had Ryan Reynolds in CGI makeup and with okay, wires. Let me, okay, you, I think you make a valid point right there. You said fast paced action scenes in those movies that you listed off. Was there really any fast paced action scenes in this movie? Not with humans, with what? fighter jets. With any dude. Yeah. Okay. Fire jets was the most biggest thing. And like, dude, most of this movie in the action I thought was so boring. Boring. Nothing was exciting. And the fact that you got this guy that has a ring that can basically anything that he thinks of he can create and they didn't capitalize on that 
like is ridiculous how like thoughtless this movie was like dude when and he made again, the race car like with and the race car racetrack scene the other people in the movie had to bring that up to remind the audience that that's what he was making because the way the scene was executed it was terrible nobody understood what the fuck was going on yeah and that in that scene in particular right like dude that is like an hour into the movie where you finally get a little bit of excitement and you actually like you kind of oh oh man there's so much shit sorry so another issue with this movie besides just the lack of action lack of developing a, a good character and being all over the place which that scene is one of those perfect scenes where like ryan reynolds is just a grump he's just a downer he's like oh let me put on this ring and save the day you know but he's all he's all sad about it. he's all mopey <laughs> like no like they should have had fun ryan reynolds yeah that's what i'm saying like the whole time like the green lantern like like dude he's supposed to be cocky man he's supposed to be like funny like they were going that way and then they backed off of it for whatever reason it made them all sad and mopey and i, I don't know if there's other scenes that were just cut because like oh whatever you know where he is doing that but the guy is cocky and that's what he was supposed to do and they 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 castrated ryan reynolds in the role um what was i oh so what i was getting with it is it's it's you finally kind of get to see like this other villain which this is the other issue with this movie is that there's like multiple villains that just don't make any sense in my head like there's the intro terrible cgi you already mentioned the cgi cgi is terrible and it is it throws me off um but they have this guy his whole thing is based off of fear right that's instead of willpower right his power is fear um and and is i guess really strong apparently uh even though they say willpower is the strongest um and so that is your main villain who you see in the very beginning you see a little glimpse of like kind of somewhat in the middle i guess and then he comes at the very end and it's really anticlimactic basically throw everything in the sun that kills everything uh um and but then you have his little henchman guy who's who's a a bad guy who is played by peter skarsgård right mm -hmm. um and and he's like mutating which i almost feel like this movie took on a horror aspect of it like dude that guy was so like all, all the practical makeup effects they did i thought were actually really good cgi is terrible which we'll, we'll talk about here shortly but so he's kind of the main bad guy the guy that you see the most throughout this film and then they just kill him off real fast at the end like oh you failed me by the big cgi uh cloud <laughs> oh that big cgi cloud that was so dumb yeah it reminded me of uh um fantastic four rise of the silver surfer whatever the really like. bad galactus yeah Right, it was yeah. just a cloud. It was so dumb. Um, like, see, okay, that's another point. Like, you don't start a multiverse with this type of character, with that type of villain, in an origin story movie like that. Like, if you really wanted to show how big and bad this villain was, like, you build him up. That's what DC didn't do, and that's what Marvel did. Yeah, and they, that's what they Marvel's having a hard time doing now. Yeah, this writing was just so, so, so bad. I, I, I think that's the bottom line with this, is that the script to this was just awful. Um, And then you also kind of have a little another thing, which Sinestro, right? Which <laughs> just cracked me up. Like, of course he's going to turn evil. His name is Sinestro. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on i just love how they give those bad guys names like oh they're good but like are they just look at the name um you know uh, you're right though about what the cgi the cgi was such so so bad like the idea 
of the whole CGI suit thing was uh, a mistake at the time. Here's the thing. Do you think, like, if they were to do this movie today, you know, this day and age, would it have been better just alone by having better graphics, better CGI? If they stayed with relying on CGI the entire time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like if they, I mean, they basically did no. that with the... No, so you think it still is just... It's not good enough. You know why? Because we've talked about this recently. CGI, for some reason, has gotten worse. Like, CGI hit a peak where everything was amazing. It looked beautiful. Like, it flowed really well with the movie. And then it went through, like, a writer strike or, like, a transition of them, like, not wanting to pay CGI uh, creators where it just turned to shit, dude. So, like, I think we're at the tail end of it right now. So maybe we would. But I think it being so heavy on CGI, it would still look like absolute dog shit. If, if this movie had more practical effects and give Hal Jordan a real suit and a real mask, and uh, and see that's the th the, th the thing like um, Hector Hammond like his effects were mostly practical. Basically, Ryan Reynolds CGI costume looks like shit, and then you mix I it with agree. a full practical effect Peter Sarsgaard villain, and then you have this giant cloud villain that's all CGI, and then you get Mark Strong who is even worse CGI, and then you have. No, I thought um, Mark Strong, right? Like his face is all practical. No, uh, it wasn't. It, yes, it was. No, it wasn't. I watched the behind the scenes thing. It was. Uh, well, then I'm. They might have added some to it, but uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Michael Clark Duncan, he was all CGI. <laughs> I like that one. Obviously him. <laughs> You're telling me, you're telling me this right here was not CGI in the movie. Correct. His face, not CGI. They put on like this weird kind of like ball cap thing mm. and and did his ears and painted him red. So the color so. of him, this color right here of him was. I mean, they probably touched it up, but like, no, like you watch behind the scenes stuff. He looks like that. Okay. I'm going to have to watch that because in the scenes he was in, like I could see the practical effect that you're describing, but the color of his skin is what makes it look so bad. No, so you go to like the, the very first alien, right? That guy, he was like all the guy that you can like, see his muscles and everything. Right. He was like basically all CGI, which that was again, terrible. A lot and that of was public fat, right? CGI. Oh shit! It was, huh? Yeah, that was that guy. Yeah, you're right. That's I, uh... what that's what got me to watch this movie because when I was watching it when we were podcasting, I was like, I'm starting to connect the dots on who these uh, who these other um, like these voices and like, and dude, here you go. Here's the other connection. Are you ready for it? The yeah. director. Where's he from? Well, I don't know. New where Zealand. Oh, okay. That's where Taika comes from. That's and where that's where Boba Fett comes from. Yep. I get it. That makes sense now. It makes a lot of sense. Uh is it Taika? Yeah. Is I am I always saying his name wrong? What do you say? Takia? Yeah, it's Taika. <laughs> I, I say Takia Watiti. <laughs> <laughs> Taika. Taika. Yeah. Um Okay. I did not know he's from New Zealand. Um IMDB I, just told me. Or uh Wikipedia just told me. Yeah. I, I don't the CGI is just so bad. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It is just it's terrible. The whole CGI suit, like I think in theory, right? I watched some behind the scenes stuff because I was like man, this is just so awful. I need to see, because in my mind, and I don't know if this is 
uh, weird or not, but like, I just kept on thinking like Ryan Reynolds was just running around in his underwear the whole time, <laughs> you know, not in one of those motion capture suits, um, which that's actually what he was wearing. But I was like, man, that's gotta be so weird. He's just running around on the set with the, in his underwear, <laughs> you know, and then his CGI on the suit. Um, but when you hear them talk about like, yeah, we went through some different things and we want to do something really different. And when you look at the suit, like in the comic mix, it's like, it is him. So that's what they're going off of. Right. It makes a lot of sense. I was like, okay, but the CGI just was not good enough at the time. Like, especially the face mask was terrible. That was awful. Combined and with uh, the blue eye contacts. Yeah, that weird eye contact. Like, like when he doesn't have the mask on, I'm like, I'm like kind of okay with it. Uh, but as soon as that mask is on, it is weird. And the fact that they just kind of cover up his his eyes or like his eyelids, and then even sometimes it looks like he even had a CGI on his eyes. Like it just didn't look, it did not look natural at all. Um, yeah. So like the the you're right. The CGI was just awful and really affected this movie. But on top of that, I think for me, I could have let go of some of this this bad CGI if the writing was just better. Like literally through this movie shit just happens so you have this weird towards the end last i don't know half an hour or so you have this weird battle where and maybe you can fill in some of the gas because dude i was constantly looking at other things on my phone just doing other things randomly throughout the house while this movie was on because i was just like this is ridiculous and so boring i think that's the best way i can describe this movie is boring it's not <laughs> exciting and um why are we looking at <laughs> Batman forever robin <laughs> okay why i'm bringing this up is because you you talked about the cgi mask did you ever mm -hmm. have this action figure <clears throat> uh no i didn't ever i don't think i did batman and robin i did batman forever though no, this is Batman Forever. This is a Batman Forever Robin action figure. This is actually the Dick Grayson action figure. Now, this action figure um, would transform Dick Grayson into Robin. However, the way that you would put on his mask is you would soak him in hot water. water. Right. Uh, yeah. And I don't think I, I didn't have that. That one was dumb. <laughs> every time. Well, going to Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern, soaking water mask. That's what it reminded me of the entire time I saw this. I was like, "Oh, yeah. I had that toy. It was a, uh, it was Chris O'Donnell with uh, you. You waterboard him, and he gets his mask." You're right. That is basically what they do to Ryan Reynolds. Um, <laughs> that's basically what they, that's basically what they did to him in this movie. Yeah. What you was need I? John oh, movie. I was just talking about like, again, like all these just holes in this plot where like, you could just tell, like, like I don't. I don't know if it came from the studio. I don't know where it came from, but there's a part where um, Pierce Skarsgård, whatever his character's name, uh, uh, Hector Hammond, right? Big old head thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he just, they bring him to this lab, right? And then he just starts using his, he has mental powers, right? He tele, telekinesis. He's just throwing people all over the place. Um, and then Green Lantern just comes out of nowhere, just boom, right through the wall and and kicks him. Again, this is basically all the action. And, and then they have a little fight and everything. And pretty much Ryan Reynolds almost kind of gets his ass kicked a little bit. It was kind of silly, to be honest. Like, wow, like this guy sucks. Um, but then also the guy, like, I guess his head is just he too heavy and just collapses next to Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> like the scene is just terrible. It's like, awful, that's... isn't it? Yeah. But at the same time though, why I, I mentioned that he was kind of like, it was kind of like a horror movie at, at times because the guy who like the makeup for, for Pierre Skarsgård was really good. And, and they just, they weren't afraid to kill off people. No, nope. he killed his dad killed his dad he killed he died 
Yeah. Tim Robbins was his dad. Yeah, Tim Robbins. Yeah. I was kind of surprised by that. Little Tim him. Robbins. Um, and then also like in Amanda Waller, which I don't know if this ever happened, but they made her a doctor in this movie, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's really her backstory or not, but uh, um, it was weird. But again, again, you see these little these pieces that they're putting in place for like a bigger cinematic universe for Green Lantern and it's just in DC. Um, so Amanda Water Waller's there and they do some stuff with her, but they can't kill her off though. Uh, you know, I really think they had bigger plan plans for her. And that was Angela Bassett, by the way. Again, crazy. How did they why did they get her? You know? Yeah. Oh, so, shit. Uh, so that was a random scene. That ends, you know, they like and then the guy just he ends up back in his house uh like oh man i'm so tired the peter skarsgård's character and he just falls on his bed like oh man that really wiped me out i was like what the how did he get away like he's at this this big ass base like he somehow he just escaped on you know so easily so all right cut to ryan reynolds and blake lively talking some stuff you know and like basically oh man like why you're why the ring chose you is because um you know you use your willpower to overcome your fears it's like you're right i do i know how to stop this big ass gas cloud thing which i don't even know how they even knew that thing was coming to be honest oh yeah they kind of mentioned it when he was in the green planet world so then he goes back to the green planet world and he just knows how to, who to talk to for all these things. Like I know how to stop it because you just got to overcome your fear. It's okay to have fear. He's got to overcome it. Right. Willpower. Boom. Oh, uh, he's like, and then again, did I miss something? Were they planning? Like were the green lanterns just planning on blowing up earth or something? Because he's like, Hey, let me just try to stop this. You don't need to send anyone or anything, but basically just let me do my own thing. And and don't send anyone else to die. Which, by the way, like earlier, like uh, uh, Mark Strong goes off and like takes some other Green Lanterns. And they all die like instantly from this this cloud thing. So I don't. They must not be very strong. But Ryan Reynolds, you know, he can do it. Um, probably the too too strong of a bad guy to start off with Green Lantern. You know, for the first movie. So he's gone, and I'm always curious about. How long has he gone for? Like he's been gone. He leaves Earth multiple times, and like it's really unclear how long he's gone for. And no one really seems to care. It's really weird. So, as soon as he gets back, uh, what happens, Ryan? <laughs> Do you remember? Right so after he goes back to the Green Lantern planet and tells him, like, hey don't send any more people to die. I can do this. Um, the very next scene after he's flying back to earth, he goes into the, the plane hangar where again, Peter Skarsgård is just using his tele telekinesis shit. And just he's, he has, oh, he has um, Blake, Blake Lively Lively. floating there and yeah, he's going to yeah. inject her with some of that yellow shit that made him all nasty ass. That's right. Um, and then so that's that's the scene where he's uh he just gives him the ring. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous scene and it comes out of nowhere where like he just flies back and like like I guess you just have to assume, oh yeah, things were happening on earth while he was gone. We don't need to show you that. You'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. That's why it's so weird. Yeah, the guy at some point Peter Skarsgård woke up from his nap on his bed. Also got a mechanical chair because he's just his head's just too huge. He can't he can't walk anymore. Could you imagine having elephantitis of the head? Oh Mouth man, it'd be, be awful. Um, and then he goes and with his mechanical chair kidnaps Blake Lively <laughs> with his brain. Yeah, with his brain, and with goes brain. to a hangar where the Ryan Reynolds just shows up randomly. Hey, I'm back. Do you want this ring? Haha, ha, tricked you. You can't have it. And then the big old glass gas cloud thing, parallax or whatever, shows up, kills off that guy who's 
you know, was mostly the bad guy in the most the main film. And and now it's it's the climax of the movie where Ryan Reynolds has to fight this big ass cloud thing. Uh, a big cloud, by the way. You know, he uses makeshift guns and catapults. And you know, here's the thing, Ryan. I will say I, I felt like at the end here they they were starting to get into like, hey, this guy can create anything he thinks of they actually started doing that at the end of the film. Like, I just thought it was a little bit too late though. That's was... why he went to the the planet. So he could figure out his powers. And then the rest of the green lantern corp was like, that's what makes him different is because he's human. Right. That was like yeah, his their humanity. Reasoning. Yeah. His, his humanity. humanity was yeah, what made but that's him what they say. Stand out. They said that after the movie was over. That's though. right. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's how it yeah. ends with a voiceover saying, you know, they didn't like him at first because of his humanity, but that's what made him different and <laughs> made him a good superhero. <laughs> See, this is why I don't like the Green Lantern, because everything that you explain in that last part of that movie was like a 10 year old's dream. Like he had to overcome his fears and he had to like figure out like growing up and being a human and how to use his powers and like what powers that he has like. That's the thing about the Green Lantern. I I want to. I'm gonna dive into the, like, was the Green Lantern written by a ten year old kid, going through it? Because <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Because like his buddies are all these other space aliens, and then like his main villain like is now this super smart dude trying to take his powers. Like, I can rewrite the story with ten year olds and remove all the comic book aspect out of it, and I'd probably have a best selling book. And nobody would know. Probably. Probably. And then um, make a really shitty movie with Warner Brothers and like re have the main character be Captain Underpants with his ring of destiny. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and that's probably why I liked him as a kid. And I, I don't know. Still, <laughs> Ryan, I, I will encourage you to try to watch the animated uh, movies. They are much 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 better um that is What's my recommendation for for this is again it's not with ryan reynolds but you know it, it has who i thought would have been a great green lantern doing the voice nathan fillion in one of those dc animated green lantern movies who's also now the green lantern in the james Gunn's uh universe so um <clears throat> I don't know. Well, he's not Hal Jordan in that one, right? He's a different no, one. Yeah, he's Guy Gardner, I believe. So, um, a little behind the scenes of this movie, Chris Pine, Sam Worthington, John Hamm, and Nathan Fillion, Bradley Cooper, Justin Timberlake, and Jared Leto were all considered for the role. Hmm. Yep. And yeah. in place of Blake Lively, you had Eva Green, Carrie Russell, Diane Kruger, Jennifer Gardner. Crazy. We yeah, could have had crazy. a completely like if this movie and see that's the thing. If this movie didn't happen, we wouldn't have Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, possibly, and Blake Lively as Lady Deadpool, which may or may not be confirmed. I don't know. But the chances are it might not happen because they wouldn't even be together. This yeah. movie set up so much. It, it really did, and it just—it was too much. They, it they set up all do... the wrong things, or all the things that it didn't expect to set up. Besides being a good movie that made millions of monies. Yeah, I just—I think these writers were over their head. Um, the other thing I had in my notes was just like, is this a sequel to, or maybe it's a prequel to Stealth? <laughs> There's a weird plot in the beginning of the movie where. Right, he's a fighter pl pilot, uh, Hal Jordan, Ryan Reynolds. Um, oh, yeah, and they have robotic planes that they were fighting against, and he takes them out. And I was like, But that's the end of that. He kind of brings out, brings them back in his Green Lantern form at the end of the movie. But, um, it just really reminded me, like, Oh man, I'm watching self again. <laughs> uh, we were watching every movie besides Green Lantern. But yeah, it turned out to be a Green Lantern movie, and that was I don't, dude. That part was probably a little bit too long and unnecessary, 
and yeah, just really poorly executed. Um, you have any other things you want to say about this movie before we get into recommendations? Oh my gosh. Um, no. Um, yeah. I mean, I said it where I think this movie had major expectations and wanted to set up so much more and it set up some of the other things that benefited the actors and Marvel, not DC. So, yeah. I mean, if anything, they probably course corrected because of the flop of this movie. Um, you know, I, I, I think they had a lot of good intentions, obviously with this movie. Um, it just wasn't in the right hands. Uh, and, and the, and the technology wasn't there. Yeah. You know, tech, that technology really helped, was too. not there. So, all right, Ryan, that's Green Lantern. Maybe we'll we'll do another team up movie. I like Hex, or... Jonah Hex. You want to do it? Oh gosh! Yeah, Again, if I have to pay for it, I don't want to do it. But... Uh, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. All right, sounds good. Let's get in our present or recommendations. Oh my gosh, I'm out of sync. Yes, here. yes. Oh, 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 oh God. Oh God. Oh. I'll have what she's having. That's right. You know what I've been having? What have you been having, Peter? Ah, oh, man, I just, I've been, I think I've been mentioning this a few times on the podcast. It's just like, I, I need something just kind of simple to watch. And that simple thing that I've been watching lately is, is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's on Netflix now. And, and I, I've watched some of it in the past, but never finished it. So it's such an easy series just to kind of put on and just have going, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I don't have to pay that much attention to it. it it's just, it's perfect for, I want to shut off my brain, but have something that's funny in the background. So Brooklyn nine, nine for me. I will go cop theme as well with you. And I am watching in the middle of, but enjoying Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. I did finish that, but it is pretty good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. There you go. Oh, Peter, um, for anybody who doesn't want to pay for it, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is on Netflix. Hell yeah. And it's number one, yes, by the is. way, which just keep that. that shit going. And I will, I'm going to watch that movie again because I still love it that much i you know love it too yeah and it, i know this isn't related to that but like just looking at the top 10 ho holy shit i don't know how mario brothers has stayed in the top 10 for so long it's <laughs> crazy i hope uh ghostbuster frozen empire has that staying power but we'll see so listeners watch that on netflix let's get that shit bumped up so they make a new movie i need another mm -hmm. one Yes, we do. With less trailers. Yes. Until next time. Pew, pew out. Do it.